Hello, I'm Lois Gray from North Highland College, UHI, um, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Multisim online to draw your circuits and simulate them. So this is for anyone who's had problems in downloading Multisim. You can use an online simulator instead. So I'll show you where that is first of all. The easiest way to find it is probably just to do a Google search. Um, so we'll just type in multi sim online um, and then it's this online simulator so if we click that um, your simulator opens now you will need to create an account with national instruments um, and you'll need to log in use your student credentials to do this and if you have problems with that please contact the uni desk because it's not something i can really help with Anyway, so it's really easy to use. You just click Create Circuit. You can see I'm already logged in here. So click Create Circuit. I'm just going to try and move this video thing out of the way so it's not in the way of the menus there. Um, and then you'll see on the left hand side here we have our components um, which you can click and drag onto the blank canvas. Uh, you don't have quite the same range of options as you do with multi-sim downloads but certainly enough for your coursework. So we're going to build an, an inverting op amp today so I'll show you how to do that. So here's our op amp circuit. You can see when you hover over you get a little tab telling you what this components are. Um, so if we click and drag that um, you can also open the menu as you can with um, multi-sim normal. I think if you click that you can see the options that you have, which are very similar to your virtual components in the downloaded version of Multisim. Uh, okay, so we're just going to use virtual components. Um, as you know, these are components that are perfect. They don't have manufacturing toler tolerances. They don't have temperature drift, gain variations. They're just perfect components. So there's our inverting op amp. Um, by the way, for your coursework, you can use virtual components as well. That's fine. You don't need to use um, actual or simulations of real components. So we want some resistors for our inverting amplifier. So all I'm doing is left clicking and dragging, putting them on. Now, when you left click and drag, you'll see that there's these four menu options here. You can delete. You can copy the component. That might be quicker than trying to find it in the menu if it's a more complicated component, like a 555 timer, something like that. Um, you can rotate the component um, and you can also flip it just using this button here. So with this one, this is going to be our bias resistor. Um, if you remember, the bias resistor helps to reduce the effect of input current bias by ensuring both the input terminals see a similar impedance. So we're going to just rotate that and that's going to be connected to our non-inverting terminal to balance the parallel combination of R1 and R2. Um, we're going to use a sine wave source to simulate the circuit. So if I just click and, oh, actually, yeah, click and drag's fine. I could have picked a voltage source, but I think it comes up automatically as one anyway. If you want a current source, you'll have to open the menu and then find your source from there. But the voltage source is the one that comes up automatically. Um, yeah, so we want to use a voltage source so we can see both amplitude and phase changes at our op amp output. Um, with a perfect inverting op amp, we would expect to see uh, the same output, the same amplitude of output, because we have a gain of 1 here. Um, you'll remember the inverting op amp gain is negative R2 over R1. So 1K one over 1K over gives us 1. But we would expect to see a 180 degrees phase shift because it's an inverting op amp. If it was a non-inverting op amp, we would see no phase shift. Okay, I'm just going to move that component over to the side or those components to the side a little. Um, and then we'll just connect them up. By the way, you can zoom in and out with your mouse scroll button. So we zoom in a bit. Now to um, connect these circuits up, you just left uh, hover over your contact and you should get a cotton reel sign and you just click drag and then left click again to connect so nice and easy sometimes it's a little tricky to get the cotton reel I found but it does work so let's just connect these up this is our gain resistor 
Game setting resistor. Um, so that will go there. The other end of that will go to the output. Uh, bias resistor will go to the positive terminal. OK, this is the wrong value. So to change the value, all you need to do is click on that, or double click on it rather, and a pane will open up on the left hand, on the right hand side here. Um, and we can just type in the new value. You can add in here some extra information. You can add temperature effects, you would change a symbol, and so on. And we're not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to show you the basics. You can play with doing these sort of things yourself. Um, and then we can just hide that pane with the arrow up at the top here. And you can see that's changed the value. So that's now the parallel combination of R1 and R2. Um, as with multi-sim downloaded, you do need an earth point. So I'm just going to grab an earth point from the menu um, and then connect that. So we'll connect that to the bottom of our bias resistor and we'll also connect it to the negative terminal of our source. Although with it being AC, it's not really a negative terminal. So that's all ready to go. You can edit the source if you wish. Um, I don't know, do we want to edit that? You have all the options for editing. They come up in the right hand plane. Um, I don't know, let's change the frequency. Let's say 500 Hertz, just to show you how to edit this. Um, so that's fine. And then we'll just close that pane again. Um, so to see the signals, what you have to do is put these um, analysis points on. So it comes up automatically as a voltage, but you do have the option of current, um, digital outputs and so on. Anyway, we're just going to use voltage. So what you do, click and drag that and then hover over your point that you want to test and just let, let go of the, the left mouse button at that point. And you'll see here we have a green symbol, so that will show up as a green trace in the scope. Um, you will also see the values change in this little box here as you simulate. I'll show you that when we actually simulate. Let's put another one on the input so we can see input and output on the same scope trace. So you'll see this one's blue. Blue will be input, green will be output. Uh, that's pretty much it. To simulate, you just click this button here, this run button. Um, it doesn't run for a specific time, it runs until you stop it. So we'll run it for a little while, then stop it, and then look at our scope. So if I click run, you can see the values changing. Um, and then if we click stop, that's it, run. And um, by the way, if you have made any errors, like forgotten your ground point, um, what will happen is you'll get a box will um, pop up on the left here telling you what your error is. Okay, and then to see the waveforms, we just go to this thing called the grapher. Um, you can see quite clearly the time base is completely wrong there. It's far too long. So we can change that by just clicking on this arrow. Oh, sorry, no, clicking on the tool plane here. And you get up your normal scope choices. Um, so we don't have a trigger. We don't really need a trigger because it's an AC signal. You could set a trigger if you want. Um, you can set the level of your trigger, rising or falling, same as with any normal scope. I'll just move this out of the way. Um, so what we want to do is we want to change the time base uh, perhaps to 10 milliseconds perhaps so that our x-axis is going from 0 to 10 milliseconds. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Let's see if that made a difference. Uh, I think I have to click here. Yeah, so that's fine. So you can see quite clearly the two signals, input and output. Blue is input, green is output. And they're doing exactly as we'd expect. You can, of course, change your voltage um, minimum and maximum as well here. If you want to export this to a copy, uh, something you can put into your report, just click on this button here. And you have the option of save, saving it as a specific waveform. Um, stream 2, I think, will stream it to the National Instruments server. But the key one, I think, for you guys is the export where you can export it as an image um, to the to a schematic or to a graph. So I'll just show you to prove that this is actually working. Let's just change the gain and rerun it. So I'm going to change the gain to 2 by changing this resistor value. Um, you've got a slider down here, or you can just set it up in here, which I think is quicker. 
Oh, by the way, if you want to come out of any menu, you have to left click somewhere in a blank space. Um, that takes you out of the menu. That's true for components and for the um, right and left menu bars as well. So we'll close that so we've got more space. Um, and then just, and you'll see it says it's out of date because we've edited the circuit. So if we just run that again, and then stop that, and then look at the graph. Um, so quite clearly our green waveform is much bigger now, which is our output waveform. Um, it should be double the size, so we probably want to change our uh, minimum and maximum. I've not tried this zoom all button. I wonder if you can do that. What does that do? No, that doesn't work. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so we'll just reset that to what we had before, which was 10 milliseconds. Um, and oh, it's automatically zoomed the y-axis for us, so that's fine. Um, the reason it went, when I did the zoom all, the reason it went to a long time here was because we had simulated it for that length of time. Anyway, so hopefully you can see there that the green waveform amplitude is indeed twice the blue one. You can put some cursors on that if you want to make measurements as well. Um, I'm sure there's a way of doing two cursors, but I'll let you find that out for yourselves. But regardless, you can do you can put your own cursors on and check that. Okay, that's all then. Um, I hope you find that nice and easy to use. If you can't get multi-sim download, it will certainly let you complete your coursework anyway. Bye for now.